Hi, um, I'm Tomislav Galjanic and welcome back to the lecture on supervised machine learning. Uh, in the previous lesson, we formally introduced decision trees. And now in this uh, lecture, we will continue uh, looking at decision trees and uh, the major issue that affects them, which is overfitting. As well, we will uh, look into random forests, which build on decision trees, uh, however, uh, don't have uh, as many issues. So let's get started. Uh, so, as I said, a major uh, danger of decision trees is uh, the susceptibility to overfitting. Uh, we can basically, you know, make a very detailed uh, decision tree with uh, many uh, split points, uh, get to the level of trees that are very, uh, very small at the leaf nodes and, and, get, and have basically all the predictions to be perfect in the training set. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we will have the same results out of sample. If we're lucky, we may uh, get the same uh, test data set as uh, our training data set, but that's, that's really no guarantee. And so uh, the problem that uh, you know, we, we encounter uh, is the problem of generalization. And uh, you know, therefore we, we try to apply some, uh, some, some fixes that uh, you know, may uh, you know, limit uh, those problems and make uh, decision trees uh, more generalizable. So what are some of those uh, responses? Well, one thing is that we could actually re remove some of the correlated features from our data, like using a PCA. We can also try to uh, develop our uh, examples or our sample data to be more balanced, both uh, training and testing. Um, and as well, there are some other uh, hyperparameters that we can use to tune our decision trees. And, and that's something that we actually do in practice. Uh, the examples include limiting the depth of the tree, uh, not splitting uh, below uh, a minimum number of samples, uh, and uh, also pruning the uh, lower levels of the tree. Basically what all of those procedures do, they make the, uh, uh, the tree less perfect uh, in, uh, in training, uh, in the in sample. Uh, however, uh, that helps them actually generalize better out of the sample. Okay, so let's now talk about uh, an alternative approach that builds on uh, decision trees. And uh, that is uh, the, the concept of uh, ensemble forecasting uh, as a way of making the classifiers more accurate. So <clears throat> the idea, basic idea is that uh, to actually uh, train classifier over different subsets of the input uh, data set. So rather than use, you know, one set and build model out of that. The idea is to actually make a number of subsets out of that set and then build separate models for each subset and then combine those uh, results together. Basically, um, typically the, the way of combining them in is, uh, you know, some sort of a majority uh, voting uh, scheme. Okay, so let's look at uh, what that actually means uh, in, uh, in terms of decision trees. And uh, the uh, the method that comes out of them, uh, which is called random forest. So uh, the first step in our in our process is to actually uh, draw a uh, bootstrap data sample uh, of the same size as our original data set uh, and do it with the replacement. This procedure is called bagging. We're basically bagging, uh, you know, we're creating samples from the same data set, uh, you know, number of times as many times as we, we wish. And, uh, you know, we are therefore, you know, creating a slightly different uh, sample from, from really the sample of size n. Uh, what do we do next? Well, we uh, build a, a small uh, decision tree that we also refer to as stump. Uh, and uh, the reason why we say we draw a tiny decision tree is because we really don't build that tree uh, either to the depth of, of like a regular decision tree, uh, nor do we use the same, uh, you know, set of uh, candidate features for splitting. As a matter of fact, here we randomly select uh, a number of candidate features. Uh, and uh, by doing that, we try to minimize the correlation uh, between uh, the, the, the optimal trees we, we estimate across different samples. Uh, the process in terms of uh, uh, you know, building a tree is the same though. So uh, once we have a limited uh, set of features that we randomly selected, 
uh, we evaluate those, uh, find which one uh, has the max information gain, and then we, we uh, basically use that one. Okay, so what we do next is to really, you know, repeat the same process uh, k times, and we get to define what that k is, and uh, you know that creates our forest. Uh, so we have uh, k trees. Uh, their features are for split are randomly selected, therefore the term uh, random forest. And the final question to answer there is how do we actually do the prediction given that we have so many trees? Well. The answer is that uh, typically we use a uh, majority vote. So each one of the trees uh, for, for example, for a test data set will have uh, an answer and those answers may, may agree or, or, or uh, may not agree among the trees, but the majority uh, will be taken as the, uh, as the vote of the model. Okay, uh, one thing to talk about uh, with uh, random forest uh, are hyperparameters. So we can choose how many uh, estimators, the, the trees we can uh, use. We can talk about how deep we want to build the trees as well as uh, we, we get to select if we want number of uh, candidate uh, feature sets for splitting. Um, so all of these have some, some predefined values in scikit-learn that are based on the best practice. So for example, uh, the, 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 the set of uh, candidate features for a split at each node. Typically, the best numbers are to be approximately log a number of uh, features or, or the square root of a number of features. Okay, so um, this is an example of, of actually calling um, a random forest classifier in scikit-learn. It's a standard classifier. You first create an instance of it, uh, initiated with certain parameters that you wish. You fit the data and you, um, you know, then do the prediction. Uh, finally, you know, you do evaluation and uh, look at uh, you know, look at metrics such as accuracy. So we'll we'll uh, we'll look more uh, at this if if you're interested in the final uh, lecture of of uh, supervised machine learning. And if not, um, this can be just for your information. Okay, so now let me uh, summarize uh, our lecture on supervised machine learning, decision trees, and random forests. We have uh, basically focused our discussion of supervised machine learning on decision trees. And one of the reasons for that, or some of the reasons are that they are fast, they're scale invariant, they can handle both categorical and continuous data, and they are very understandable. Um, however, they do come with one, uh, with one, uh, challenge and that is they're prone to overfitting. Uh, because of that overfitting problem, uh, we have uh, come up with models of random, so-called random forests. They're based on uh, decision trees. However, they are uh, in an ensemble model because they actually use multiple trees uh, and they use a process called bagging which is basically creating uh, a subsample out of a original sample uh, by, uh, by, uh, by uh, random uh, repeated sampling uh, uh, with replacement. Uh, what we know from practice is that they're highly ac accurate. Uh, they can be paralyzed, uh, paralyzed and uh, you know, they're very much uh, you know, popular in practice. Uh, typically, searching for hyperparameters is not needed or it's, it's not a significant process. Okay, so, um, you know, I hope you uh, get to, uh, uh, to practice uh, what you learn in this lecture on uh, supervised machine learning. For those of you who are interested in uh, digging deeper into the Python code, uh, for the examples that we discussed in this lesson, we will do that in the final uh, lecture of uh, on this topic. Um, thank you very much.